Hey, what's up, guys? It is uh, Tuesday the 30th. A little bit of a different start for me today. I Six, eight months ago, started going back to ju do jujitsu, which I used to do years ago. Um, and then, you know, things get away from it, injuries, whatever else. And I kind of took a step back. Now I'm going back. Being a white belt again, man. So, well, I was anyway. I never really advanced past that because I never went to a structured class. And I've been doing that for about six, eight months. And that was usually every Monday and then every uh, Thursday. Today, they, now they smoothed it to Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I'm off of it right now. So I'm getting at this a little bit later than I wanted to. One of the things that's caught, been brought to my attention the last few days has to do with my philosophy or my thought with respect to rents and how and, and what's going on as far as them raising them these days. I'm looking at more at the apartment complexes when I'm talking about this mostly, especially when you know I have children that are now out in the world renting. I mean, I don't I don't house as many kids as I used to, right? They're all on their own. And I'm talking to my nieces, my nephews, people I care about, and I see what they're being charged. You know, my daughter that lives in Idaho, the best lease she could find was a lease that said they can raise the rents in the middle of the lease period. She got hit in the middle of the lease period. I think like I, I think it was like a hundred bucks a month. To me, it was just crazy. But and it may even be more than that. But I'm seeing these rents across the board when it comes to um, apartment complexes that just keep climbing, climbing, climbing. And that's where when I say raising rents 15, 20 percent is immoral, uh, because I think in some cases they do just to do. Now, I don't see their numbers. I don't have them. Um, but, you know, when you get into the numbers, you've got to take a look at this. So don't be afraid. Because Aaron Chapman said something, I got I to gotta keep it to a certain amount. No, nobody says you have to do that, right? I just had costs go up on one of my properties. So I might have to do a little bit of an increase when it comes to things. So one of the things, you know, George sent me a client of mine and a peer of yours, sent me a message last week. He goes, hey, I, I love what you say, but, you know, when you get into the immoral thing, we need to talk about that a little bit more. And he went over his costs and that he is seeing, you know, the uh, taxes have gone up significantly in, in some of the markets he's in. Insurance has gone up. There's been some upkeep. Well, let's think about that for a minute. In a particular market, when the costs associated with that market go up, it's got to be something you passed on. Because if they owned the home, they'd be experiencing the same thing, right? So just because it goes up doesn't mean you don't, you don't raise your rents. You know, I'm not saying that this is something you should guys avoid doing. I'm saying, in my opinion, that if just because rents are going up nationally at 12% or in specific markets, like you're going to go to Miami, you're going to be paying something like, what is that, like 30 plus percent, and you don't need to raise it, is it something that you should do? That's a question you need to ask yourself. I can't speak to that. So um, I'm of the mindset, you guys need to look at your numbers, know what you need. Go about that for the sake of yourself and your business as those, those clients that you have, clients meaning your tenants, because if you alienate them and take their opportunity to rent from you, you're not going to have tenants, right? You can't. There's going to be a certain point where you're going to push it past that. So that's just my philosophy, my thoughts, I'm not trying to pigeonhole you guys whatsoever. I just think we, need, we definitely need to be as benevolent as possible with respect to what we're doing. So on to some other things. I had an article shot to me by Tim Yates. I think we've had him on here before. I've, Maybe or maybe we, I, I think I've had Tim on here. He's, he's with my secondary marketing department. He shot this on his Wall Street Journal article. And it's interesting going on and on about in this article. It's a really good article about you, the real estate investor, buying from uh, into markets outside of your direct market and how that's working and what's happening to the people within those markets. He also uh, it, I talked about there what some of those markets are starting to do to, in a way, kind of push back on the real estate investor. So be aware of what's happening in those markets. Take a look at legislation. You know, there's some places where you've got the city council thinking, maybe we need to do something, put some barriers in place for these investors, make them start almost like a business within the community and, and file it as such. So things you need to be aware of that's going on out there, because there are some things that are occurring that could make it a little more difficult for you. So let's take a look at the charts. Today was a very interesting, uh, interesting morning. It started out pretty positive, and then things flipped on us pretty quick. I'm hoping I'm sharing the right screen here. It, I'm hoping so. So if you guys are seeing it and praying, that's what you're seeing. So what I'm showing here, like I'm going to stop it real quick. And I might even be, I might even have been showing the screen I want you to see. But so when I'm doing these single, single screen operation here, it's hard to see. Yep. Okay. There it is. Sharing the right screen. I was on the right one. My apologies. Um, so 
here we're showing, of course, the same level of support that I showed you guys before. Here is the uh, level of resistance. We didn't even make it back up there. We got pushed back down. But we also have, and I don't have the moving averages up here for some reason. It didn't want to work. Those moving averages were right in here too. So we bounced off that moving average. But today we had you know, consumer sentiment. In fact, I believe it's consumer sentiment. I'm going to take a quick look here on what we had as far as uh, the the releases that we had, but there was a new release. We had we had it going upwards. We had a an improvement going on in the market, and then all of a sudden it flips around on us, and we get we get punched. There's consumer confidence. The consumer confidence numbers came out a little bit more uh, aggressive than what they had anticipated they would, and as a result of that, that consumer confidence number came back and immediately pushed the market down. So the market made that decrease. That was a negative movement for us because they're thinking, oh, if there's confidence out in the economy, maybe things are a lot better than what they thought they were. But in reality, guys, we're still having in, we're still in a recessionary situation. So I don't know why the confidence would come across the way that it did, but it did. So um, there's other things that I believe, and Scotty and I was having a conversation about this earlier. When it comes to what the perception is in the market, again, this is a consumer confidence reading. Is it, is it whatever, however they they gauge that or however they survey that? A lot of it comes, I would think, from what they're getting from what they see. So if they're seeing things in the news, they're seeing the 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 commentary that's coming, if they're watching a lot of the White House press releases, there's a lot of things being given that's rosier than what we're really experiencing. Um, so that could be influencing the confidence of the average consumer, depending upon how much they consume news and all those other things, that things are getting better, right? Or I can actually afford to fill up my gas tank now because it dropped a little bit, but at the same time, gas is still stupid high from where it was before. So all these things that are influencing it off of the high or its worst point, they may be getting a little more confident about where it's heading. I'm not confident personally that we have that we're in a downward trend as far as expenses are concerned. I think we're still going up. I think we're still going to have an increase in everything. And as a result of that, we're we're kind of in a, a little bit of a head fake on the market. Just my opinion. I don't know for certain. We still have a few more things to shake out, but that's what I'm looking at. And as a result of that, rates are going to see a little bit of a negative movement today because of that negative movement. Any locks right now, we saw that channel. I'm not necessarily one to lock the channel. I'm locking it at the top. I'm not going to lock it at the bottom, but your call, we want to talk to you. Talk to Scotty. We'll work out when is the best time. Thank you guys. Appreciate you watching. Um, today's Tuesday, so Friday. Get back at you. Thank you.